Well, welcome again to another one of my podcasts, uh, Down to Earth but Heavenly Minded, and uh, we are going to continue on in the book of Proverbs, and we are on lesson number 16. And today, we are going to be looking at the uh, result of listening to wisdom. And uh, we're going to look at it in two parts. So here is the first part. Uh, and uh, we're going to look at it uh, passively and actively. So if we passively receive and actively seek wisdom, then two things will happen. We'll start being wise and we'll keep becoming wise, wiser. Solomon explains these two results and gives... Uh, uh, the rationale for each. Let us start with the first one. And the first one is this, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity uh, guarding the path of justice and watching over the ways of his saints. Proverbs 2, verses uh, uh, 5 through 8, and that's in the uh, English Standard Version. Now, you'll start being wise, verse 5 uh, states that you will understand the fear of the Lord. This concept ought to be familiar with Proverbs uh, one seven. In other words, we read it before and it repeats itself here. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Remember that the fear of the Lord is the very first step on the path of wisdom. Solomon now promises that uh, listening to wisdom will result in the fear of the Lord. Therefore, if we listen to wisdom, we will begin the journey of wisdom. This point is, uh, it may be uh, obvious, but it is crucial. Wisdom is not something that just happens as we live life. Uh, yes, life teaches us lessons, but uh, that's another subject. That's a, a, a different way of looking at it. But life in itself does not uh, just teach us how to be wise. It doesn't come automatically with statue, education, experience, age, or leadership position. We must receive it and seek it in order to gain it. Let me read that again. We must receive it and seek it in order to gain it. We must admit we don't have it before we can possess it. We confess we can't see it so we might somehow perceive it. When it is weak, it is strong. It raises from lowliness. And that's where wisdom comes from. Not from might or strength, but from lowliness. Why is this the case? Because the Lord gives wisdom, Proverbs 2, 6. It comes from his mouth and not ours. Proverbs 2, 6. It dwells in the storehouse, and he loves to dole it out liberally. Proverbs 2, 7. He is our shield. He can't, uh, we can't protect ourselves. Proverbs 2, 7. He wants us to trust him for all things, including wisdom. Thus, to become wise, we must grow close closer to the giver of wisdom. That's why uh, previously defined the wise as those who are moving towards the Lord. You know, that's why, you know, we looked at that. If you're not moving towards the Lord, you're not, you're not doing what, what God wants. It's not wise. Do you want to become wise? Draw near to the Lord and listen to him, and you will become wise, a lot wiser. Now let's look at the second part. Listening to wisdom will make you wise. Okay? 
Believe it or not, this idea is the major theme of the Bible. Adam and Eve woefully trusted themselves and not God for wisdom, Genesis 3, 6. And that choice uh, initiated all our troubles. That's where all our troubles come from, because they did not listen to God's wisdom. Ever since, God has graciously, graciously intervened, uh, directing his people back to himself and away from themselves. I always said when I came to know the Lord that the Lord saved me from myself, and he did, because I was uh, going totally in the wrong direction, and he turned me around and brought me back. And this is, our, this is where my confidence is, and this is where their confidence is. For example, after Abram defeated the uh, four most powerful kings of his day, the Lord appeared to him in a vision and said, Fear not, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. Genesis 15, 1. You know, when Jacob had to run for his life, God appeared to him in a dream and said, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. Boy, when God makes a promise, he keeps it. Genesis twenty-eight fifteen. He took Jacob a bit of time. Uh, it took Jacob a bit, a bit of time to get it, but eventually he did as is clear from his declaration of his uh, to his wife your father does not regard me with favor as he did before but the god of my father has been with me genesis 31 verse 5 so he finally learned that god was with him okay now jesus targets his own mission to those who knew they needed him and were willing to draw near to him. He built intimacy with and gave, a, uh, and gave his wisdom to those who were spiritually. Now let's look at the sick, the poor, the small, and the lost. Okay, the sick. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. In other words, if you're self-righteous, there's no chance for you. But if you realize you're a sinner and you need a Savior, uh, and that you're sick with sin, God will come to you. Mark 2, verse 17. Now the poor. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, 3. So be poor in spirit. And then small. He who is least among you is the one who will be great. You want to be great in God's kingdom, then you better be a servant of all. Luke 9, 48, and the lost. The Son of Man came to seek and to save those that were lost. If you don't realize you're lost, you can't be found. Luke nineteen ten. Okay, he came to the humble the proud, Luke uh, 1, 51. And to the blind, those who see, John 9, 38. Uh, so they might come to him, Matthew eleven twenty five and 30. Those who thought they didn't need him or did nothing and utterly and, and ruined everything. So they didn't figure they needed help, and they really ruined everything. To summarize Solomon's argument so far, Proverbs 2, verses 1 through 8, If you listen to God's wisdom, you will become wise, because God wants you to depend on him for everything, for all things. And when you start relying on yourself, then you become a fool. Well, now the second results of listening, and that is if we are passively receiving and actively seeking wisdom, then two things will happen. We'll start being wise and we'll keep 
being wiser. We already examined the first result. Now we'll uh, address the second one. So then you will understand righteousness and justice and uh, uh I, I, I always got trouble with this word, and I don't know why. It's, I, I want to call it, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not even sure how to pronounce it, uh, equally or, uh, uh, let me try it once. Uh, equity, equity, that's it. I don't know why I struggle with that one word. Well, anyway, inequity, uh, Proverbs Lesson 14 on Down to Earth but Heavenly Minded podcast, every good path uh, for wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Proverbs 2, 9 and 10. Uh, you keep becoming wiser. In Proverbs 2, 9 states that you will understand righteousness and justice and uh, equity, every good path. Uh, does that list uh, righteousness, justice, and uh, equally, or uh, equity? <laughs> there I go again. Ring the bell. Yeah, it should. You may recall the same phrase from uh, one three when Solomon listed the second purpose for the book of Proverbs, that we would not just know the right thing to do, but also do it. And uh, we'd have to go back and look at that, and I believe that's what it what it said. Now, here in chapter 2, he promises that if we listen to wisdom, we will understand every good path. In other words, we won't just become wise. We'll keep on living wisely and begin to, uh, the journey of wisdom, Proverbs 2, 5, and continue walking along it every moment of every day and every little decision we make. Uh, Proverbs 2.9. It's something that'll just take place automatically. Uh, so we have to passively, uh, uh, you know, look for wisdom, and then we have to actively live it. Uh, why is this the case? Because wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Proverbs 2.10 You'll survive a hostile takeover. Your heart is now filled with and mastered by wisdom rather than by your own simplicity and lead you to folly. Your desires have changed because more like God's own desires. You now find knowledge to be pleasant and not something to be despised. Proverbs 1.7 says that. You will now be a different person, free to make different choices and wiser choices may I add. This type of listening, listening uh, that produces such constant change is not something that can be uh, completed after a few tries, it's uh, uh, preserving discipline. It just keeps going on and on. It's, it's something that don't stop. As we live a life of wisdom, our needs for listening grow more, not less. So don't be like Sol or Solomon did. Remember how Solomon stopped listening and became a fool. Don't follow his examples. Keep receiving and keep seeking. Then you won't be like the marathon runner who was disqualified because he hopped on a bus for part of the race. Be a finisher, not a starter. The end of your life is more important than the beginning. Ecclesiastes 7.8 And boy, that is so true. And you know, I pray to the Lord uh, uh, that he lets me finish strong because there's always that tendency to move away from God and not towards him. And that is so foolish. Well, when we listen to wisdom, we'll keep becoming wiser. What does it look like for us to walk this path? 
Here are some ideas. All right. The first one is ask God for wisdom every day. And I, this is so important, and I, I try to do this. No, uh, scratch that, make it every hour. <laughs> well, I guess I don't do that every hour, but we should. Okay, uh, number two, uh, in every situation, ask yourself, what can I learn here? And three, learn how to study the Bible. Here's some help and more help. Meet regular with others to discuss it. We have a Bible study, and we try to have it once a week. We have Bible teaching uh, once a week, uh, and we are to read our Bibles every day. And uh, this, is, this is very important. Then ask other people how they think you could grow. And then last, read a chapter of Proverbs every day. That way, you could cover the whole book each month, 31 chapters, 31 days. And it can be done. And it doesn't take long. These chapters are actually short. Well, the second result uh, of listening. Okay, continuing on. If wisdom had entered your heart and the fear of the Lord characterizes you, then you will love instructions in practic practicality. Then you would love God's instruction. You would love God's instructions which means you draw steadily closer to him. Everything is progressive. Don't let your life slip by without careful attention. By the time he turned 21, American theologian John Ward, Jonathan Edwards, he was the one who gave that uh, sinners in the hands of an angry God, if you remember, had written 70 personal commitments. He called them resolutions for his walk with Christ. They included things like speaking words that build up, managing his time well, and being a trustworthy person. More noteworthy is his commitment to continually trusting in Jesus, especially when he felt on top of the world. Now, in that list, item 53 states this, Resolve to improve every opportunity. I am the best and happiest frame of mind. Uh, you know, when he, when he was at that point, that's when he cast it and uh, to cast and venture my soul on the Lord, Jesus Christ, to trust and confide in him and consecrate myself wholly to him that from this I may have assurance and my safety, knowing that I confided in my Redeemer. And then at the top of the right uh, before the first item on the list, he wrote this statement. Remember to read over these resolutions once a week. <laughs> Here was a man who understood his uh, natural tendency to drift from the path of wisdom and who set himself to give careful attention that he might not do so. To summarize, when we are in agreement of Proverbs 2, verses 1 through 10, if we preserve at listening carefully to wisdom, you will grow to love wisdom. Your proud, selfish heart will melt, liberate you from to make different choices every day. You'll be uh, heading in the right direction, growing closer to Jesus and becoming more like him. What a beautiful way to end. You know, uh, I hope you understand that uh, wisdom is so important in our lives. And let us end our, uh, our podcast with uh, God is out here. And you can find them in your Bible. Read it every day. And you'll grow wiser and wiser as time goes on. Well, I'm glad that uh, we got a chance to get together for this lesson again. And until the next one, uh, Lord bless and uh, have a great day. And we'll see you now. Bye now.